Hey there, and welcome back to Parenting Uncovered. We are Dave and Ashley Willis. And just, we haven't even said this yet, but we are coming to you, if you're watching this on YouTube, we are coming to you live, uh, at least live right now, from our studio in South Lake, Texas, the marriage, marriage capital, capital of, the, of world. the world. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I'm having a delightful pumpkin spice latte, okay, made with oat milk at our EXO Press. Uh, and I'm telling you guys, you're missing out. If you don't come, watch one of our live recordings or even some of our other podcasters' live recordings and, and just go in the EXO Press Cafe and enjoy your day. If you're in the DFW, that's Dallas-Fort Worth area in Texas, you can come anytime. We have good Wi-Fi. You can get your work done and, um, and also see what's you. happening at EXO. Yeah, so, yeah, listen to live live podcast recordings have a nice yeah it's nice really beverage. good i'm gonna keep on drinking this but we are talking about something that man i know so many of you can relate to and we certainly can relate to and that is how to parent a strong-willed or spirited some people say child yes and so i'm going to start with something that's uh that's that's funny okay so in kentucky where we grew up go wildcats go wildcats yeah. uh, an obituary Re went viral for a man named James Loveless who passed away it. June 14th. And the Aww. obituary was written by his, tying into the episode, mm -hmm. strong-willed son, right? So he had a his couple strong-willed strong son, son that wrote his father's obituary. Okay. I and, think I've seen this, but refresh my memory. I just want to read this to you. This is a real obituary. <laughs> um, and uh, it's for James Loveless, written by his Rest son. Rest in peace, James. Rest in peace, James. Yes. Born and raised in Kentucky in 1963, a state that has been recently leaning toward more liberal values, we might add, Jamie, a divorcee, father, grandfather, and proud owner of a few lots in the trailer park, had enough and up and died on June 14th in order to avoid another presidential stolen election mishap in the near future. Wow. As a gluttonous eater of fried foods and snack cakes, as well as the occasional chili cheese dog, James tried in vain to give up the ghost by clogging his arteries and having a stroke in 2015. Aww. His twin boys, Rocky and Rodney, had other plans, made him go to the hospital. While waiting in the ER at the hospital, he was heard saying, let's make a break for it, only to be heard by one of the off hospital staff and forced to go through the procedure. He wasn't too excited, but he went anyway. On many occasions in life, James was seen in his backyard at the trailer park during the early hours of the morning, hammering beers, standing over his country-style ribs and yelling, it's got a head like a cat on it. <laughs> While nearby neighbors would peek out their windows, bearing looks of disgust and amazement as the party guests were slurring remarks about needing to speed up his cooking style. We've been here since five o'clock, they'd say. I got to get to work in the morning. <laughs> we don't know if he was married, but he was definitely a ladies man. Oh my there God. was Kathy, Mary Lou, Tammy, Deborah, <laughs> Carrie, Tina, etc. It's the bones, he'd tell us, proudly pointing to his skinny, pasty white legs. Women love a good shin. <laughs> <laughs> we think he might even have some females waiting for him on the other side. Wow. Jamie loved his family more than anything else in the world, except ice cold bush, room temperature bush, <laughs> T-bone, New York strip, prime ribs, shrimp, swimming, poker, hatchback Mustang, GTs, tank tops, Kentucky men's basketball, and his personal copy of Eddie Murphy's Raw. That is funny. He leaves behind his favorite <laughs> son, Rocky Loveless of Arizona City, Arizona. His second favorite son, Rodney Loveless of Science Hill, a younger brother, Joey, an unofficial daughter named Melissa of the trailer park, as well as a pair of old boxer shorts, which have Buttweiser, King of Rears, <laughs> printed on the design. He will be moderately oh missed. Gosh. Moderately missed. Pulaski Funeral Home is honored to assist the family with arrangements. So Pulaski County. <laughs> so this Shout is uh, PulaskiFuneralHome.com. You can wow. <laughs> see a picture of, uh, of, of James and... Uh, and oh, rest they in peace, James. That. I always we always joke about why why people pick the pictures. Right? Yeah, do. get a decent picture of like, yourself that could be that used in the, in the obituary. The As a guy that does funerals, <laughs> I just see the family will pick a terrible photo of you if you don't just say, you know, use this. So that is hilarious. So, by the way. so his two sons got together and and wrote his an obituary for their dad. His favorite son wrote the <laughs> obituary. <one> <laughs> so strong rural kids grow up and. You know, they'll write your obituary, so you gotta keep and that in mind. They're gonna tell all your stuff. <laughs> they're gonna tell all, all the your skeletons stuff. skeletons in the closet, <laughs> all of it. No, I, I, I mean, you can tell they truly love their dad, and yeah. I mean, that's really sweet. And he's probably, if he, if he could read that, he'd be laughing. He'd be know? laughing. That's my like, boys. And he'd be like, they even mentioned the boxers. You know, <laughs> Buttwiser. Buttwiser. Okay. Um, no, but in all, in all uh, seriousness, I'm so glad we're talking about how to raise strong-willed kids because this is the episode 
of many episodes, okay? Because I think we approach this podcast as one like, what would we, what did we wish we could have known, you know? And this is one of those where, man, a lot of the things we're going to share with you, I wish I would have known, you know, back in the day when I was in the thick and when we were in the thick of dealing with strong willed kids. Because first and foremost, I want to say like strong willed kids, they are, they are a blessing. Like this is not a curse as it feels as a parent. It feels like why, oh Lord, thank you for this child, but why did you give me such a strong willed kid? Yeah, yeah. Because here's the deal. Strong willed kids, you know, um, they're the ones that no matter what, what you say, a lot of times they'll challenge it. Okay. They're usually smart as a whip and they just, they're, they're thinking like, I have a better idea. Okay. And, and they'll voice it. They're the ones that, you know, usually have a really good sense of humor and will do stuff that they think's funny. That is really embarrassing to you as a parent. We've had this many times. Um, you know, they're the ones that usually get a teacher comment that, uh, shows the teachers frustrated. And we're going to share some stories like kind of from our own experience, you know, in our family, we have four boys, Cooper, Connor, Chandler, Chatham, and um, there's a nine-year span there, and so, and we have in or the ten, middle. Ten, really? I mean, it's all, well, nine and a half, yeah, yeah almost, almost ten. ten. You're right, and uh, definitely ten grade-wise, like in in school. Yeah. But they, you know, we have we took kind of a breather in between what what we refer to as our bigs and our littles, and um, if you're into kind of the, I don't know, the birth order stuff, there's whole books on this. We almost traditionally, if you look at those, and again, this doesn't define anybody because every family can be a little different. And every personality can be different, but ours, are, it's almost like we have two firstborns and two babies personality wise with those studies they've done on birth order. But, uh, and a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times in families, it tends to be a lot of firstborns or ones where there's like a big age gap in between. A lot of times only children, you know, tend to have first uh, or tend to have a uh, strong willed or spirited qualities. And so in our family, our first Cooper and our third Chandler really, you know, both are strong-willed. Okay. And I will say when we first realized this, which was honestly for Cooper, I'm not even kidding you. Like when he was a baby, right, sweetie? Yeah. He did this thing where he, you know, Cooper, sweetest baby slept really well. Like I want to say, and people get people with kids who don't sleep, sleep well. I'm hard. I, I feel bad even mentioning this, but honestly, most of our kids slept really well. So we didn't have colic that we were dealing with slept really well. Um, pretty easy in a lot of respects, didn't nurse well. We had a lot of problems with like the whole nursing thing, which probably is just user error on my part, like understanding it. But I remember when he was probably like six months old, he did this thing where um, he would, if he didn't want something, and, and once he started talking, he would actually verbalize this because he was an early talker, like he really was. But he would raise his little fist and he would punch the air. <laughs> like trying to, like but get then he away. would get scared of his own and then fist. He would get scared of his own fist, <laughs> which was really funny. It was... And then when he was old enough to talk, he'd say, no, no, don't like don't it. Like it. <laughs> and he said this to everything. And he'd punch the air and go, no, no, don't like it. No, no, don't like it. And, oh man, um, he was, he was strong willed. I mean, he was so strong willed. And like, I remember it just, it was like tightly wound, you know, you could just see it in his little body. And, um, and then, you know, we end up in the school years and, and there was just some working through some of those things where teachers, even who, who hadn't dealt with strong-willed kids would misunderstand them. I think a lot of people, if they are not well-versed in the strong-willed child and, then it can feel like, why will this kid not sit on his square? Why won't she raise her hand? Why is she talking all the time? Why? Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Like I got talking on my, I was a strong child. My mom said, I, literally for years, I got talking marked on my report card. I'd get moved to a seat by myself, you know? And again, I wasn't trying to be like rude. I was just like, I have things to say, you know? I mean, like as a strong willed kid, you're like, I want to be known. I have things to say. And, um, and so anyway, I remember, you know, with Cooper, we definitely had, had some things we were working through. He ended up having some uh, intestinal issues, which a lot of kids do. And this was like about four years old and that were pretty critical. I mean, like ending up in the ER sometimes, you know, and I remember uh, because he is just so intelligent and very verbal, always has been, he could really articulate his feelings and his wants and desires. And I remember like having, you know, he needed certain medicine and there were certain procedures we had to do to help get him through this like intestinal difficulty. And I remember literally like having these battles with him, like he would go to battle and resist everything I was trying to do with him and everything you were trying to do with him. But that, cause that will, he didn't understand what he needed. And that will was so strong and it was, it was hard, right, sweetie? I mean, those were, those were some really hard years. 
they really were. Yeah. I mean, they were really hard years, and it was discouraging as a parent. And I, embarrassing. Like, embarrassing, you right, yeah. All out, like, oh, gosh, tantrums, yeah. just. And, and it's hard to not take it personally as a yes. parent. Like, oh, it's, but you see. Especially with your first child. With your first one. You see somebody, you, we all play the comparison game, which we should not, because every one of us is unique by God's Very design. Much. But you look at your friends who have this kind of docile, well-behaved, calm spirit you know, calm natured kid. And you look at your child who's, who's very spirited, yeah. very strong will challenging you on everything. Cha- and you think, yeah. my gosh. And, and then whether they mean to or not, the, the parents with a really easy natured kid tend to be judgy. They, they think, especially with the first kid, without the experience of knowing each kid's so different that, yeah. that that kid is calm because they're somehow like superior I've parents. I've, I've got this. Oh, and, and my, I would never, that would never, I would nip that in the bud right away. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden, like we have, you know, I won't name names. So there's a young couple in our church. We love dearly. They're good friends of ours. And we had kids long before they did. Yeah. And uh, the wife, would see our kids coming in when they were young and, and spirited. Well, and this is what she would say. And I know she did not mean, like, I don't think she was trying to hurt a, her feelings. No, no, or she was very young at the time. But she would say, oh, here come the Willis boys. Oh, wow. Here, here yeah. they are. Everybody like, knows. The freak shows in yeah. town and w- yeah. admitted. And she it didn't was, say the freak shows in no, town. No, but it you was. You could hear it. <laughs> you could hear it, yeah, in, in her expression. <laughs> and it was obvious from her expression and tone and, and kind of some of the sarcastic remarks that it was clear that she was just judging us basically as Oh no, I mean I thought that family. later she was. Like Yeah, she, well she there was it wasn't it. a mystery. But I mean it's fine. But we're now, all the perfect parent before we're all kids. imperfect. But now they've yeah we're all the perfect parent we before are. kids. Like I was but now she's head. got three very spirited boys and they're the ones coming into church. They're what they're they're and they're just the precious sweetest, and sweet precious, and wild. But they're just, boys just full of spirit. Like know? ours were. And yeah. I love it. I love it. And there's but, a lot of spiritual girls out there too. They're the ones that look worn out now. Those parents look worn out. And are you know we've kind of like our kids have all mellowed out. Yeah. And so it's just she's actually it. apologized to us. She's like, listen, <laughs> she I was did. wrong. Like parenthood has humbled me. I used to have these just it humbles all of us judgy guys. thoughts. And so anyway, we love them. They're awesome. Well, I had one friend of mine, um, dear, dear friend. She's become one of my very best friends. I remember um, back when I first got to know her, we had I think we just had the two boys and she had two girls around the same age. And, um, and we, were, we were part of a dance group at church. And so we got to be around each other a lot. And our kids were around each other a lot. And I remember her being like, just kind of looking at me like, why can't you get your boys like handled? You know, and they weren't, again, they weren't doing anything bad or rude, but just being more spirited, wouldn't really sit still. Yeah. Because, you know, Cooper's strong-willed and he'd have his, his way he wanted to do things. And then again, I've shared on this podcast before, Connor wasn't strong-willed, but was had ADHD. So he had like right. focus he was issues. Wild. He's sweet natured, all in, that. But he's he... chill and as far as being easygoing, but he was, especially in the younger years. Bouncing just, off the walls, climbing everything. I mean, literally bouncing off the walls. And I remember my friend, um, you know, later on, we ended up having our thirds to get, our third children together at the same time. I mean, I threw her a baby shower and everything. And I remember her little boy, because um, so she had the two girls and a boy. And I remember in the early years, like when her little boy kind of found his voice, he, he is extremely strong-willed, extremely intelligent. In the early years, gave them a run for their money. I mean, there's all kinds of stories. Precious kid, but ex- one of the most strong-willed kids, I mean, that, that I think I've encountered. And she's like, certainly that she's encountered. And she told me, she said, Ashley, she said, I'm going to be honest. I used to think that you guys just couldn't get it together. She said, I love you guys. I've always admired you guys. But I just, when your kids were, were smaller, I literally thought, they just don't know how to get control of their kids. And she said, but now she goes, I have a strong willed kid. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And he does these things. And she's like, I don't know what I was thinking. She goes, I'm so sorry. I was judging you all. And I'm like, listen, we, we just don't know. We don't know what it's like till we're there. Like, yeah, we just yeah. don't know. And I will say that her child now, you know, you talked about mellowing out. He's a sixth grader and it's being strong willed especially in those early years and maybe again in the teenage years. Yeah. yeah. Really, really hard season for parents. But in the long run, if we steer it towards the good things, strong-willed people can do incredible oh, yeah. things. Super and it will serve you well world, in life. World leaders. Yes. Are people that started out as strong-willed world kids. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a superpower if you, if you channel be. it. Yes. But how do you channel it? We want to give you some real practical stuff. Something that helped with our third who was... Well, let's talk about Chandler. That yeah, Chandler, our third. Um, who was fresh on the brain anyway. Awesome. It's such a bright kid. I mean, he is... He is now like a Boy Scout. He he is he's working to be an Eagle Scout. S- just a great kid all the way around. But in the early years, 
very strong willed, very and hard maybe to rein even in. More than Cooper, maybe the hardest I mean, I one. I think, yeah. And we discovered something called occupational therapy, which well, I didn't know what that was at the time, but it was it was a life changer because uh, Cooper went through it as well, right? Well, let, can I give a little bit of background yeah, to yeah. this? Um, so here's why we ended up in, in OT is what they refer to it. So Chandler in preschool in particular, he we knew he was strong willed, right, sweetie? I mean, this wasn't yeah. like a shocker to us, but we end up putting him. Um, in, in this preschool that all of our kids had gone through, we knew everybody there and he gets a teacher that none of our kids had had. And, um, I think like this, I don't know, the, probably the fifth week of school, I go to, uh, pick him up in the car line and the teacher literally like puts him in his car seat. Cause you know, they're four years old. So they're in like the car seat and she almost like slams him down in the car seat. Like there was a frustration yeah. with how she put him in the car seat. And see, normally it wasn't his teacher who put him in his car seat. So that's why I hadn't seen this before. And I hadn't had any, like she had sent no notes home. There's, and they talk about behavior stuff. Like there's no, I had no information yeah, yeah. that he wasn't doing well. Like there was no, this, so this was very concerning to me. So anyway, and I look at her and I go, oh, I said rough day. And she goes, oh, I, I don't even know where to begin. And I was like, what? And and I, and I paused for a moment because I'm like, I need to know what's yeah, going course. on. And she's like, I just, I don't even know where to start. And so I was like, okay, we need to have a conference. So we end up scheduling a conference and I sit down with her and this is a teacher. She's taught a long time. She herself had homeschooled two boys, um, you know, and had a, this whole class of kids and stuff. And she said, listen, I have been teaching a long time. I've raised boys myself. But she said, Chandler basically is like no one I've ever taught. Um, I'm out of my league with him. I don't understand his love language. She used that. She said, I try to get, I try to understand my students love language. I don't understand his. And honestly, I just don't get this kid. Like, and, and what I heard as a mom is like, I don't like your kid. And I'll be honest with you. She didn't like, and I, oh, yeah. I've been a yeah. teacher you guys for, for years. And I, I am very reluctant to put that label on a teacher or on anybody. I want to be like, no, it's not about that. But I think yeah. Chandler had given her such a hard time. Yeah, that that she, she didn't like him. I mean, and and Chandler being a, a very intelligent, you know, yeah, he, kid, he, he picked up on he it. Picked he picked up perceived on it. it. She doesn't like me. And she did this chart system. And this is what you need to understand about strong willed kids, too. Um, it's not that they they don't want to make. I mean, most kids aren't with whatever they're dealing with. Aren't like, I'm just going to make everybody's life miserable. I'm going to make a scene. I'm going to be bad. You know, like, I don't think it's like that. I think a lot of times it's I want to be seen. I want to be loved. Yeah, I want to be yeah. noticed, you know. And um, they had this chart system where they would, you know, get like merits and demerits based on behavior. And Chandler, who is just wired this way, Cooper was very similar. Cooper's all, he's a, an achiever, wants to do well, great, amazing kid, um, you know, wants to rise to the level and picks up on this. And so Chandler was no different. And, and anyway, he came home and he was like, mom, he goes, no matter what I do, I can't move up the chart. And then at the end of the school day, and this is the big mistake here that at the time was made in this class. He said at the end of the school day, they line up the kids based on where they are on the chart. And he said, I'm always the last kid. Oh yeah. And, and that, he said, that's demoralizing for a four year old. I mean, it's, it's just seems he cruel. He would cry about it. Cause yeah, he's like, like, I'm trying. He goes, she never notices the good yeah, that I'm she doing. She only sees the bad. She only sees the bad. And so anyway, after that, that, um, meeting, uh, we met also with the principal of the school and she was like, listen, we love Chandler. We've had him before he was in like their two-year-old program and their three-year-old program. And she's like, we know he's strong-willed. And she's like, let's just keep an eye on this. And just to do our due diligence, uh, we made it an appointment with the doctor, right, sweetie? Yes. And it was, uh, you know, the doctor that suggested occupational therapy yes. and we didn't know what that was. We're thinking like, it just sounds like like some extreme thing, like, oh my gosh, what occupational therapy, right. what is that? But really it, it's a, it's, it's a system and a program. I mean, it's, it's kind of a combination of, of coaching, counseling, and, you know, helping kids get control of, of tasks and motor skills and, and behavioral and behavioral issues, issues yeah. in a very structured way. And it was a game changer for him. I yes. mean, um, it was difficult for him at first to but he quickly adapted and we saw the change almost immediately. And it was an encouraging process for him because mm -hmm. he realized, okay, I have control over my, over my reactions. Yep. And when I, when I can control my reactions, good things happen. Um, so occupational therapy is something to look into. If you've got you a strong a behavioral kid. specialist, yeah, behavioral, th uh, behavioral specialist. And mm -hmm. so, uh, the, the group of, uh, ladies that, that worked with him there were, it was just, it was such a gift. I mean, so the, why we do this podcast really is to just let you know about tools 
that you might not have known about and to give you encouragement on the journey because guys, parent, parenthood's difficult and it's yeah. the most important job any of us will ever have. And so we just want to let you know there, there are resources out there. And if you've got a really strong willed kid, especially one that's, that's, uh, that's, you know, really young, yes. um, something like occupational therapy could be a game changer and just know that there are resources out there. There are. And you mentioned earlier, um, that Cooper went. So later on, um, I, I don't even remember what age it was, maybe in the early middle school, since we learned about occupational therapy and how helpful it was to Chandler, there were some things going on with Cooper that we were like, you know what, let's just have him evaluated and see if this might help him. And it did. Like they worked on some different things yeah. with Cooper. He wasn't having like behavioral issues. he was issues. older. So like Chandler right. was four when Cooper went, he was... I think sixth grade maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and he was willing to go. And there was, you know, we come to find out... Um, there were things that would irritate Cooper. We could do a whole other podcast on this, but uh, Cooper most, I mean, now this is more kind of diagnosed. I think he had some sensory issues that frustrated him yeah, that yeah. we did not know about. And the occupational therapist um, really taught us about this. And, you know, I will say this, uh, now that Cooper's 18, he's at the University of Georgia. So he's gone through middle school and high school and now is a college student. His being strong-willed has served him well. And he has... I feel like God um, has helped Cooper to move this in the right direction. You know, Cooper being an achiever has that strong will to keep, to keep going after that goal. And uh, Cooper, you know, he's, he's academically very driven. And so he really was able to achieve the things that he wanted to achieve and get into his top school, uh, made really good grades. And he, uh, he's been able, you know, to, to have leadership roles in different capacities over the years. And I feel like it's given him a confidence um, and a lot of aspects of his life that, that have served him well. Yeah. And so it's um, a superpower. It's a superpower. And same with Chandler. Like I'm seeing now scouting is, is really catering to that strong will. Cause you have to be very self motivated. Yeah, you got to be driven yes. and, and it's yeah. channeled in an, in a, in a, the right structure. It is. Um, yeah. And he's thriving in it. And he's so you got to f- put your kids in a place, whatever their personality, where they can thrive. I think it was Albert Einstein who said every, every, child is a genius at something. Yes. But, I it, truly but it, if a that. fish thinks that its job is to climb a tree, it'll go its whole life thinking it's stupid. Right. Um, cause a fish is a genius at swimming. So yeah. find what your child thrives in, find the environment where they thrive and then, and then support them there. Don't try to squeeze them into the mold of just like, well, everybody in our family does this or does that. Right. Well, maybe your, one of your kids isn't wired for that and that's okay. And don't make them feel like a, a failure because they don't, but help them just be at their best. And right. um, yeah, this has been a great conversation. Hey, we in every episode mm-hmm. with my favorite part of the show, a fascinating fact from Ashley, a dad joke from Dave and sweetie, you want to go first? You go first. All right. All right. All right. Do you know how, do you know how a penguin builds his house in the snow? I do not. He glues it. He glues it. He glues it. He glues it. Oh my goodness. He glue That's it. Cute. You know, I think I mispronounced it. He glues it. Yes. In, in, anyway. I love it. Well, today I'm going to talk about how bug moms serve snacks too. Because, you know, moms were known for getting some snacks together and having snacks on the go, having snacks after school, you know, yeah. all things. Um, in sports. And this is again from smithsonianmag.com. It says this, mammals are perhaps the most involved animal moms, yet a small but distinguished number of creepy crawlies are also doting mothers. Mommy, daddy, long legs, who I just, I love mommy, daddy, long legs. They're great. Um, tote their spiderlings for a week after they are born. They tote them around. And one type of earwig mom gives her all. Her hatched, this, this, this is crazy, okay? Her hatched, and, and this is this is where this takes a turn. Her little hatchlings, okay, her her hatched offspring, after she gives birth, completely consume their mother. They eat. they eat her, okay, and it's a chilling pro, a process called matrig. Oh, I'm sorry, matriv. How, how do I say this? Uh, well, we get it. Matrivi- it's, a, matrivi- it's a thing. They eat. They eat. Matrifigi. Okay. But they. This is how they do it. So earwigs. She gives birth. She's given life to them. And then she's their first snack. Yeah. You know, isn't that like parenthood, though? You <laughs> give life to the children and then they just try to suck the life out of they, you. Know, they, no. <laughs> they, no, but I'm like, you, you're looking at me like, Ashley, that's so weird. But I'm telling you. It is fascinating. She literally, she literally you give all for all. your kids. She gave her all. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, no, you didn't know it was going to go there, did you? I did not. That took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> He's speechless. He's speechless. And on that note, hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm not. I thought I wanted a snack, but now I'm not hungry. You're like, this sounded fun, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate y'all so much. Reach out to us on Instagram. Let us know what's happening. Send us ideas for shows, fascinating facts, dad jokes, whatever you got. You can find us at Dave and Ashley Willis on Instagram and our ministry's website, xomarriage.com. A bunch of free resources for you there as well. God bless, guys. We'll see you next time.